Hey everybody, Brad Linder back at you again with uh, a sketch card of the day here. We're going to be doing this finished piece of uh, Wolverine, going to be coloring this up, and uh, we're going to be knocking it out, so hang tight for it, and I'm going to share this over with the channel real quick, and we'll go from there, so uh, bear with me just a second while I refresh this so we can share it over, okay. And we are on the channel, and now we are live on the page. Cool. Okay. So, with that said, now I'm going to be able to do this and knock it out here. I'm going to start in real quick with his claws so that we can just get those out of the way very, very quickly. So, And I'm using the pencils today because I just wanted to color this one with um, a little bit of a different type of feel to it. So that's just what I got. So there we go. Um, I promise to keep it light today, and I don't back down on my promises. So I am going to keep this very clean, very subtle, very light, very airy. And... Uh, you may notice I curved this claw in the center here just a little bit. And the reason I did that is because I took it from the uh, the days from when he had bone there. And I just wanted to give it that natural curvature, which we don't normally get. Okay. So I wanted to do something a little different with that. So I have that going on. And you'll notice that I'm coloring these from the middle out. And this gives it that... Uh, that ridged effect. So we've got that going on. Just coloring that in to solidify. Very cool. Now most people would stop about here off the tip just to give it that edge and give it a little sharper point. I, eh, I don't mind going all the way to the end on it um, just because I like doing that. So whatever it's personal preference depends on how sharp or blunt you want them but at this particular angle I'm trying to keep them as uh, ridged as possible so if they look a little blunt yeah that's because of the perspective and uh, it's okay if you follow through to the tip it really is it's a personal thing so you know preference no biggie so I'm getting tagged left and right here. Just want to see what's going on so I don't have a problem. Um, just want to make sure everybody can hear me and all that good stuff and whatever. Uh, got a lot of site work done today. That's the reason I'm kind of not as uh, I'm kind of, you know, distracted a little bit. And it's not because I'm, I don't want to be here. It's just because I've got so much left to do. And, uh, I'm still getting it out there. And this thing is going to be a meme that you guys can go and download for the opening of the site. So uh, <clears throat> it will be there once it's colored. I'm going to scan it and do the whole thing and whatever. Um, and I just realized I had set this aside and stopped. And when I erased, I did not ink this shoulder. So you guys are going to get to see that done too because I totally forgot. See? Total distraction today. What would you do today? Oh, I inked Wolverine. No, you didn't. What else did you do today? Oh, I had to cover the shoulder because I forgot it when I got the live going and discovered it. Whoops. So, we'll get that going. I'm going to kind of leave this a little sketchy because this is going to be a a shoulder pad, not necessarily conformed armor. I always had this going um, as more of a different type of material rather than just having armor there because it bothered me, you know, it being hard material like a shoulder pads. It's just like, uh, I, I'm a woman in 1987 and I'm going to go stereotypical with shoulder pads. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and don't get me wrong, it was cool uh, at the time, but Shoulder pads are shoulder pads no matter who you are. 
<laughs> so whatever works, man. And yes, you'll see a little bit of the blue line come through, and I'm okay with that because I want this to show as a raw sketch and a little more uh, of a hand-drawn effect, and I want that on purpose. So get that little piece off there. That was eraser dust underneath there, and I hit it, and it kind of goes thunk and makes a dark mark on the drawing when you do that. So you got to watch out for that. But, uh, yeah, I want this to have a little darker feel to it, a little bit uh, of a stronger texture. I'm going to turn on my backlight here so that we can get that going because I didn't pull it up the, uh, the old lamp here. There we go. Now we can see some stuff. Yay. And this thing is like a 500 watt per bulb, and it's got a double lamp head on it. So it's, um, I mean, it is a studio lamp, and I, I love to use this thing. But uh, the direct lighting, if I don't preset it, it it's kind of like the surface of the sun. <laughs> so whatever works, um, it is what it is. So I'll try not to get a burn while I'm doing this. But there we go. Cool deal. Darken that up just a little bit more. Yay. Cool. All right. Now, just going to thicken this up just a little bit. Now, when I blend it, it'll, it'll look a little better. But uh, as we get in here right now, I just want to lay this on a little thicker so you guys can see the color. So there we go. Now I'm going to pop in this lip here. There we go. Now these are straddlers. Um, th this is a, the big straddler set of, I think it's 48 that I use as a standard or 70. It's either 48 or 72, and I don't remember which, because I have them both around here in the studio. And I like to use both of them, mix and match. But that's the box that I grab from. And this is just the standard uh, flesh tone. It's got a, you know, for a Caucasian... For those playing the home game, that's the white guy. But uh, anyway, yeah. So we've got that. Um, Going to be coloring this out now. I just wanted to inform you guys. I did get a few of the requests for the the fifty for fifty that I offered yesterday. I think I got nine or ten orders. That's pretty cool, man. I'm glad you guys are interested in this stuff. I had no clue. And I don't normally do commissions because of the fact that they're a pain in the butt because they keep me away from my artwork. But I wanted to do something to give back for all the help that you guys have given me with um, the following and, you know, the support on the artwork and all that stuff, especially with the diminishment of the current uh, comic standard, you know, the, the business and market floundering and flopping around. Um, I just found out today that uh, I'm getting a ton of stuff coming off with the book. Got a lot of orders on that from a pre-page order. And uh, a lot of people are telling me that they don't even know where the page is. And I'm like, okay, cool. I will should have put it on the site. So, but I'm not one to really push my stuff too much. You know, I'm not a buy my stuff type of man because of the fact that when you, if you discover you need me and uh, want to work with me and you're a good fit for working with me, that's awesome. Uh, people tend to fall into the right place at the right time with the right people. And um, I'm a firm believer in that. And my services are there, awesome, cool, whatever. But I'm not one to really push it, you know, buy my stuff, hire me, buy my stuff. I mean, granted, that's part of the job, but. I like doing things creatively, you know. I like doing things a little more open than that. And uh, I would rather you enjoy my comics and my marketing and whatever else knowledge that I bring to the table. And uh, go from there. And if you make a little bit of money with it and you decide to go further, awesome. If not, that's fine too. Because uh, that's just how I roll. But anyway... <laughs> it cracks me up. 
I'm not one of those people to use modern slang and all that. And hey, man, yo, it's your boy, blah blah. You know, no, 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 no. It's not my thing. There are a lot of people that do, and I, I appreciate that. I understand it. It's cool, but it's just not. You know, I hit a point, and eh, eh, that's it. So, uh, anyway, I'm gonna go in here and pop in the old highlights on Wolverine. I think I'm gonna do the blue first, though. Um, everybody asked me uh, if I'm gonna do the blue first or not, and I think I'm gonna go that route so we can save our grievances with the yellow. And I'm just gonna pop that in there. Move this up a little bit so you guys can see. Cool and deal. But I will be making this a print, um, a, a, well, a digital meme and download. I won't be making it a print, I don't think, because uh, I don't want to sell this thing. But I will be making it a, uh, a little bit of a download you guys can get. So it'll be cool. It'll be cool. And I'm not going to highlight this white um, with reflections and all that. I'm going to make this very blunt because of the fact that I don't want to do all that armor work and uh, make this thing look like shiny armor when I just said that the, the contrasting material is different. Like I said, I did it like a, uh, a Kevlar maybe is the type of feel that I wanted it to have, you know, so that was the reason for... All of the wonderful lines that go across it. And to keep from streaking through that, just in case there's any graphite pockets in here, which I did erase, but I just want to make sure. I'm going to try and restrict that a little bit. Yeah, it's all gone. Cool. As soon as I say that, watch this big gray streak just... Whoosh. That would suck. So... But anyway, I'm knocking this bad boy out, and the sketchbook is just about ready. I finished uh, the print sample run on it. I got those in. I got uh, a couple of changes I wanted made, and man, we're just about there. Just about there. I need to post that up on the website and uh, get it out there. And let you guys be able to get a hold of that however you will not be able to get a hold of the cards until the uh, until a later time with the Kickstarter you will not be able to get a hold of the cards you will be able to get a hold of the sketchbook and get a copy of that if you want it uh, but you will not be able to get a hold of the sketch cards and you will not be able to purchase those because uh, we are using those as rewards for the uh, sketch card can uh, or the uh, Kickstarter campaign going to be using the sketch cards from the show. So I thought that would be a cool way to give it back. I know I mentioned that before. And um, it's just a unique incentive with um, the orders. And these books being printed with the comic books, uh, <clears throat> it's going to be pretty cool, man. So got Catman Evolution number four coming out, and it's going to be in a, um, a condensed trade. So you guys will be able to see all that. It's going to be a massive book. It's going to be a massive book. It's going to be a pain in the keister to have printed, man. <laughs> That's okay. Because you guys are awesome. And my fans and followers and friends deserve that. So, anyway, I'll skirt around joking aside here. Knocking this guy out as quick as possible. So I can get back to this website. And not that, like I said, not that I don't like hanging around with you guys. I just want to get it out there. And so many people are asking me about it. It's like, when are you going to get the sign up? You said today. I know, I know, I know. I know, I know. So, I got a question for you about the, you know, the thing with um, <clears throat> comic characters, Wolverine's a pretty masculine dude, you know, he, I mean, he's like one of the more butch characters in comics, 
and uh, a little more old fashioned and uh, a little more of that regal old school, you know, um, I got a splinter, I'm okay kind of thing. <clears throat> and then when it turns to staff, that's when he complains. But uh, <laughs> not that he's not sensitive, though. It's, you know, he, he's got a cool sensitive side too to his personality. His heart and mind are in the right place. But it's that old school, uh, you know, man's man type of thing going on. I saw a guy in the, uh, I'm going to set my pencil here. Get that dust off. Bear with me just a second. Old school sharpener. Best way to do this. But I saw a guy sitting at the uh, grocery store in the line, and it was hilarious. He got a, a package of um, rice cake chips, okay? Dude was 6'2 if he was an inch, all right? And probably 250 pounds. I mean, just a big dude. This guy goes to pick up the package and cuts his finger. And it's like a paper cut, you know. I mean, it's just a little nick from the from the uh, cellophane bag. Um, not even a cellophane; it's a um, uh, kind of a foil stuff, you know. Whichever the chip bags are made of, you guys know what they are. But anyway, he cut his finger cut, and I mean, it, yeah, it bled just a tiny drop. But when it happened, this dude squealed like a woman, and I don't mean to be funny. Squealed, I mean squealed like squealed, squealed like a 12 year old girl and I just never heard anything like it I mean I've heard of uh, you know people being sensitive and whatnot and this was not a feminine guy I mean he was not he was clearly just a regular guy you know um, but man people just uh, if I'd have done that my family would have busted out laughing at me like I was some kind of fool, like I'd have lost my marbles. And, you know, and I'm a joking guy, and I I play, you know, whatever. You know, somebody pinches me, I'm like, ah, you know, kind of deal, and have a good fun with it and whatever, and screw around because I'm a wild card like that. But, man, to see somebody do that in the middle of a gas station in public like that, I mean, he squealed out like it was a like it was a woman. I've never seen anything do that. You know, any, anybody just do that. And the dude's got this barreling deep voice and whatnot. I don't know. I, I'm pro-masculinity. And, you know, I mean, if that's your nature, that's one thing. I'm Like I said yesterday, I'm not bashing on that at all. It's just, come on, you know. It's a paper cut, man. I mean, grow up, you know. I see people do that kind of stuff all the time, and it's like, well, be sensitive to his, you know, his whatever, and it's just, come on, toughen up a little bit. I mean, my 12-year-old daughter's gotten paper cuts before and never even blinked. She's like, ow, it hurt, but you don't see her, like, boohooing like that guy did. I mean, he was almost in tears. I was like, oh, my God. And... It's just one of those things, man. I don't get it. I mean, I was raised old school. It's a little bit different for me, you know, because I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm 40 years old, and it's, I had masculine men figures that did that, but they still raised me to respect people and be, you know, sensitive to that and empathetic, and I understand that, but it's still, the guy in me is just like, oh, come on, man, please stop it, you know? Are you being funny or, you know, are you playing around? Are you pulling a Robin Williams? Are you pulling, you know, like a Damon Wayans, like a, a blank man kind of thing? Or, you know, what what are you doing? And this dude was like, serious. Can I have a Band-Aid? Do you have a first aid kit? And I'm like, what? I mean, it just hurt my feelings. I was like, what? I, I'm, I'm, I'm crushed by that. I'm, I'm distraught. I, I mean, you know. I might need a hug or something because I've just never seen a dude do that. But it, it's, you know, all playing aside, I just got it highly humorous. And, you know, um, 
I'm just waiting for when Wolverine or one of these other characters like this just goes really, really soft that way. Because, you know, um, that, that's part of the way it's headed. And it's really disturbing when you stop and think about it. I mean, seriously, it is bothersome in the way that it's, it's coming across. <clears throat> Just, dude, toughen up, you know. Uh, we, we need more, more uh, role models that are, you know, teaching people how to guide that line and toughen up and be realistic, you know. It, it's like these kids sitting on couches for, you know, months on end. I'm sorry, but if you, if you say, oh, man, I'm bored, well, then you're being lazy in your boredom by sitting out and not doing anything active in your life. You know, same thing, same thing. Get some contrast, get up off the sofa, get something done, you know, get out and create something, get out and do something, build your business, build your, your, uh, you know, your income, build a, uh, heck, build a birdhouse. I don't care. Just do something, you know, I I'm so tired of people doing that. And it's just, ugh. come see me. I'll show you how to build a business. Come see, you know, uh, go to pretty much anybody that says how to anything and learn something. I don't have free time. And that's a lesson I'd like to share with you guys, plain and simple. I don't have free time. I'm constantly busy. You know, um, that's, that's one thing I don't do is I don't sit around and I never say I'm bored. Never. I get cabin fever and want to get out and do something different, but I never get bored. Never, never, never. And you shouldn't be either, you know? There's too much to do in life, in this world, for you to ever say you're bored. The only reason you should be bored is if you're locked inside somewhere, like a prison, and can't get out. Because someone is monitoring you and won't let you, okay? Otherwise, you should be ready and rocking and rolling. Plain and simple. I'm broke. Well, that's your problem. Why go make some money? Well, I don't know what I want to do. Well, get a job. Build a business. Do the work. Get a paper route. Do something. Mow a lawn. You know, don't complain about it if you're just sitting there and going, well, you know. Because I love that. When people go, well, I don't know what I want to do. And everybody around them caters to that because pity loves, you know, company. And it's just really, you you want to sit around and whine about it? Get up off your keister and do something. That's what I talk about in my book, you know, uh, The Mental Rift. When I wrote that book, that was all about motivation of getting up and doing something and stop saying you're lost. If you're lost and you're bored and you're broke, it's because you're not doing anything about it. If you're bored, it's because you're not doing anything. If you're lost, it's because you don't know what you're going on and you haven't had a plan yet. Because the best the, the best plan that you can make in the world is any plan that starts with a, with a step. Because if you don't have a plan when you start working, you're planning to fail, as the old adage goes. Plain and simple. And that, that's one thing that I like to say. Uh, to my students, plain and simple about that, like I said, that's my favorite phrase of the day, plain and simple, is, you know, well, I'm bored and I don't know what I want to do. Well, answer those questions. What can I do right now so I don't be bored? It's not because you can't do something. It's because you're not doing something because you haven't set in motion the plan to do something for the result that you desire. That's too hot outside, and I'm too, you know, big for that, and I can't move, and da-da-da-da-da. Well, if it's not a health thing, and I'm not a doctor, and I'm not telling you to do that. I mean, if you've got a health issue, that's different. But I'm saying if you're a healthy young person, and you've got a, a couch holding you up, and you're sitting there saying, oh, I'm bored, man. I've played this game too often, and i played it, and I beat it, and I'm just bored. And I need another game, but I don't have the money to go get it. Well, guess what? That's the answer to your problem right there. Get up off the sofa. That's a movement. And then go make some money to get the next game that you want. 
make yourself rich, then you can play games all day. If that's what you choose to do. So, it's amazing how that works. I'm bored. We'll make a plan for an activity. What do you want to do? What do you like to do? What can you do? You can go walk around the park for 30 minutes. Get some exercise. Get some air. Get some breathing room. You might meet the girl of your dreams or the guy of your dreams or maybe the, maybe the guy or girl of your nightmares. I don't know. <laughs> it could happen. It could happen. I see that happen so often with people just sitting there. It's like, oh, man, I don't know. I don't I can't do what you do. Well, that's because you're not doing it. Have you ever tried? No. I told my daughter that all the time, you know. If you're gonna get if you're gonna try to do something, if you want something, go get it. If you want to try to do something, go try it. You won't know till you try it out. You won't know till you get it a shot and you know, give it a shot and see what what comes of it. And you're not gonna change that. If you're just sitting on your butt so that's part of it man you got to get up and get up and move and get up and work out take care of yourself the body needs exercise body needs nourishment it doesn't need tomfoolery with you running around saying that sucks so cool deal you know okay I'm gonna come in here with this gray I'm going to knock this out. This is a little bit darker one than the one I just used for the claws, uh, which is more of a bronze kind of thing, a light gray bronze. Um, I'm coming in with this one because I'm darkening out this visor here and this cowl as it goes. Um, I like to edge this with a gray, make it pop up a little bit. There we go. A little more focused light on us. Get it all in there. So, let's see. Done. But yeah, I see that all the time. So stop it. Stop it. I see you. <laughs> I see you sitting on the sofa, not doing anything, saying you're bored, saying you have no money, saying you can't afford school, saying you can't afford, you know, whatever opportunity you have a car coming up or you know well i can't afford a house my mom and dad want me to get a house but i can't afford a house that's why i live with six roommates well if you live with six roommates then you should be able to save money because you're not paying for the house entirely so put that money back and get your stuff going you know uh just plan and economize just a little bit just a little bit and it'll change your world so you have to take on that vision and I'm not going to go all hooky with it, you know, the, the secret and all that. And, I mean, yes, it does work, but you have to be able to apply it for it to work. I wholeheartedly believe in the secret, but the thing is, there's a difference in visualization without action versus visualization with action. Big, big, big difference. you got <clears> to <throat> be able to step up and do that. And if you can't, that's an issue. So now we've got him all laid out. I've got the blue here. I've got the gray here. I've got the black uh, inks involved. Now I'm going to go in and put in this wonderful, wonderful yellow as the primary color first. I grabbed the red. Whoops. Just going to kind of coat this first because this one's going to be two color. Oops. I smashed the lead. I do that often. Heavy-handed, I told you. I'll chip the lead away. Do that far too often, unfortunately. And you can see the dust here from the yellow. That's pretty cool. But yeah, get off your keystring, get something done. What have you drawn today? What have you written today? What have you posted about today? You know? I see that all the time and it cracks me up. I'm so bored. 
Why? Why don't you go outside? I don't want to go outside. Well, well, then why are you bored? You don't. You're not bored. You don't want to do anything. And I believe there's a word for that. But we won't go there. So. As you guys can tell, because of the thing yesterday, I mean, I'm in a way, way lighter mood, and I promised I would keep it light, and I'm gonna. It's just, ugh, so much stuff going on, man. So fickle people are. And I'm not giving up hope on them. I'm not giving up hope on anybody. Anybody. <clears throat> hopefully it'll all change and lighten up and that's part of what I teach and do and hopefully hopefully we can get in there and change some thoughts some minds would be cool what'd you do today? oh I blogged a little bit today oh I drew a little bit today oh I made a pretty pretty picture so, <laughs> I would dig that. Excuse me, coughing there. I would, I really would. I would dig that. Somebody said, you know, oh, I, I drew a picture. Here it is. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. Because I'm sharing one with you guys right now. Yep. I was talking with a few people uh, earlier today about, you know, how the state of the industry is for comics specifically right now. And, um, you know, it's like that transitional phase of the, of the 60s, the late 60s, right there before Chris Claremont came in with the new version. You know, it was that 1950s, 60s mentality of the teams, you know, on the books being all dry and, you know, systematic and it's just funneled, very funneled, very um, niched and they're filtered. It's the word I'm looking for, filtered. And it's all the traditional, you know, 1960s um, style of that leftover stuff from the 50s. Where you had that one stereotypical, you know, good versus evil type of approach. And I see a bunch of people coming in with a different aspect of it <clears throat> in the seven the you know mid 70s when uh, Chris Claremont rebooted uh, the X-Men, which allowed for this guy to show up on a regular basis in the team. Phenomenal. And uh, Storm. And Colossus and Nightcrawler and uh, Kitty Pride and a couple of others, you know. Um, Warpath was in. Um, Warpath's brother was in there. Um, Thunderbird and there was a couple of others, you know, that were in there, and it was very diverse and it was very balanced. Uh, very very cool. I love that cast. I love that team lineup. Very cool. Very clean. Very open um, culturally. And the New Mutants came in, and they were very balanced in the same way a couple of years later. So you had that same kind of feel to it. A lot more women in that book uh, in the title of the uh, New Mutants when it originally came out. There were more girls in there than guys. And a lot of people don't know that. When most people presently think of uh, the lineup for the New Mutants, they think of Rob Liefeld's New Mutants, which is um, the predecessor to the uh, X Force run, which made him so popular. And the funny thing is, that it's not. It's not the original lineup. They were totally different. So uh, there were a couple of them involved, but 
they changed that lineup a little bit when Cable came in and, uh, you know, uh, Doug Locke came in and a couple of the others. And, uh, yeah, they changed that lineup a lot. And that's okay. They were supposed to. You know, it needed to grow. And the title being called New Mutants, you would expect it to be New Mutants periodically. But uh, whatever. <clears throat> But that was a very diverse team as well, and I always thought that was really cool that they did that. Adjusting my arm set here. My chair was trying to prevent my arm from moving, so I had to adjust the arm rest. All this technical stuff. Darn you, armchair. <laughs> Shame on you for saving my back. So I'm not all stood up. <laughs> that's another good thing. Get yourself a good, expensive office chair that's designed for you to sit in for 8 to 12 hours. Uh, at a time because that will save your spine herniated disc and compression problems like no tomorrow one of the best things in the world is I, I, I that I have in my office is a good chair and you can go to any office supply store and get that don't go to Walmart or something like that you know and buy a, a $98 chair I mean if that's what you can afford do it. I'm not going to begrudge that by any means. You know that. But what I'm saying is if you can afford to go get yourself a two or three or four hundred dollar chair, do it. You, your back will thank you for it for days and weeks and months and decades down the line as you go. Okay. Keep yourself clean with that because if you don't, you're going to end up like many of the older guys and have back problems, knee problems, hip problems. Um, I won't name anybody or anything, but I do know a few of the older pros. And, man, they they tell me all the time, it's like, oh, you know, this is why I don't draw comics anymore. Everybody says, you know, don't you draw comics anymore? No. Well, why? Because, you know, I ruined my C whatever or my, you know, my L this or, you know, my S that. And my A this, and it's just, really? Well, what do you, you know, what do you put towards that as being the problem? One, I didn't take enough breaks. Two, I leaned too far over my table. And three, I had a horrible chair. So that's a couple of things I don't do. I keep my table really high so I don't have to lean over it. I get up and uh, move a lot. I also have a, a standing side desk, so I don't have to really worry about that. Um, I have an adjustable table, so I don't have to worry about that either. And um, I got myself a really good chair. And when I got it, I actually had to save for it quite a bit. So, you know, um, that that's one of those things. You have to save up for that stuff sometime. And I, I've had this for, oh, good Lord, I've had this chair for probably... I don't know, 10 years. <clears throat> but I had to earmark it. And not that I couldn't go out and just buy it. It's not the, That's not the thing. The thing was I just didn't want to, I just couldn't see paying the money for a chair like that. And, uh, you know, I, I'm just, I was raised frugal that way. And it's not that I'm cheap. It's I was raised, literally I was raised frugal. Because I was raised on a farm, you know, so and in a farming town, so we didn't just splurge on stuff like that. And I still have issues with splurging on things that are that extravagant. You know, I'm just more about the practicality of it. However, when I got into comics and started doing more of them and pushing more hours and things like that, I definitely had to go that route. And, I mean, it was a necessity at that point, so it changed things. But it's not that I don't have the funds to do that. It's just I prefer not to. Because I would rather spend that on something else. 
And uh, that was a luxury item for me. So if you need to do that and you look at it that way, uh, look at it as a business investment. And go ahead and bite the bullet and get it done. Because if you don't, like I said, your back will pay for it drastically. And then your family and your livelihood and all that good stuff will pay for it as well because you'll be laid up. And you won't be able to participate in anything, and you'll be laid up in bed crying and moaning about how bad your back hurts. Believe me, I have friends that do that, and I feel horrible for them because of the fact that they hurt and can't fix it. Because there's nothing you can do. And, you know, that's just part of life. I get that. But get yourself a good chair. Get yourself a good table. Get yourself a good setup so you don't risk it. Now, I'm adding a different um, a different blue here. I'm going to get my little spray can here to get that dust off there. But uh, anyway, I'm just building this up a little bit with this lighter blue and this... Um, more of a teal color or turquoise no, not teal but turquoise I wanted to build that up a little bit and we're gonna pop in this darker blue on the other side with the uh, shoulder pads when I'm done but I just wanted this to have a little more vibrancy to it little more uh, blue to it that one was a little light and I wanted to uh, darken that up I had it here just in case it would be and this is more of the Wolverine type of blue the classic um, turquoise color you know that that turquoise blue which there, there's not another color for it I mean there's not another name for it it, it is definitely the turquoise blue that makes Wolverine pop against that yellow. And then I've got a little, um, a light gold bond orange. It's a super light orange. And I wanted to use that as a contrast in the yellow so that we didn't have more of a rich feel. And I should have done this digitally now that I think about it. I probably should have colored this digital because, I mean, it would have made a better cleaner print but that's okay <clears throat> I still like it and I like coloring by hand for you guys because this shows you know that monochromatics flats and um, dual tones still work by hand because I see so many people doing Copics and whatnot and they they never go back to this and then they're just like I don't want to color with pencils because it feels like we're in kindergarten and it's like big boy crayons and I'm just ah come on man it's an artistic tool it's fine it is an artistic tool it is fine if that's what you dig that's what you dig I personally do dig these and if that's not your thing that's cool too whatever man but uh <clears throat> Yeah, this is coming up very quick. Okay. Got to knock this out here. This time's ticking on. And like I said, I want to turn this into a cool meme for you guys to download. Nice screensaver possibly. Something like that. Yes, I know I haven't done the thumb yet. Thank you for that, though. Okay, cool and deal. Boom. Nice blue coming out. Exactly what I want. I was working with one of these the other day, and I had it like this, where I had it about halfway down, uh, where my grip is, about halfway down. And I pressed on it just a little bit, and the sucker snapped. And put a big smudge across the drawing that I was doing. I was like, oh, 
Thank goodness for it being pencil. Because I've snapped pins that way too. Especially nibs. Um, I've broken the plastic stems on them a couple times. Yeah, that's always fun. That's always fun. I don't tend to use nibs uh, for that reason. Because I just don't have the control over them. But it was a massive black and I wanted to stick and I wanted it to be really, really dark. So I pulled out the good India ink and started inking on these things. And then all of a sudden it went crack right in the middle. And uh, I've, I've done that a few times. Yeah. And people are like, well, just be gentle with them. Just be gentle with them. Ah. It doesn't matter. I'm heavy handed, so I do it no matter what. Uh, and if I control it that hard, I end up slowing it down to the point to where it's not um, <clears throat> it's not beneficial anymore. It, it becomes a hindrance at that point. So that's no good. So I've decided what I'm going to do here on these shoulders is I'm going to darken them down a little bit where they look a little more like armor and like I said, a separate material. Than just the leather and the spandex kind of thing so I really want them to have that dark blue look like they're a harder material and you can control that with um, you know different shading and lighting and whatever but I'm just doing it as a color offset right now because I'm keeping this very simple, as it were. So bear with me on that. I'm going to knock this out. <clears throat> and it'll make it stand away from the, the gloves and the boots a little better. And it'll make it uh, pop because it, it'll just make it a little more diverse. So. Okay, come up here through the middle, boom. I really dig this one because of the fact that whenever it comes out, um, when you just offset it, just one color shade, it's totally different. It changes the rest of the dynamic of the picture, which is awesome and exactly what I want in this case. So, very cool. Now, I mean, we could go all elaborate with this, but um, we could go all elaborate with it and make it, you know, um, whatever. And I could do like 20 shades of different hues and whatever on here, but I'd rather not. So, so I like to keep my style simple. I probably should have been, I, I was probably born like 10 years too late because I probably should have been in um, the older school guys' ranks because I love the classic style of drawing rather than um, more of the digital stuff that they do now. So if you hear that kissing and stuff, that's just my air can. See, that's way different. Yeah, I really dig that. Way different. Okay, going to hard line shade this just a little bit. I'm going to get that piece right back there so I don't miss it. Making sure I'm still on camera here. All right. Going to knock this out. Almost done here. Then we've got the orange coming up for the uh, rest of the body. I'm going to do, like I said, that gold bond. And uh, which is the color of uh, a, a warm orange. And you know that color actually came from a, a printing um 
a, a printing paper that uh, shields and tacks um, matte finishes for the printing industry. And it's called Gold Bond Mats. And they that's old school printing, though, before digital stuff came along uh, and changed it. And that's what you're looking at. You're looking at about that color. I mean, it's it's significantly darker than what we've got going on already. But, uh, yeah, that's where that came from. That color is uh, a paper that was used in, you know, it was specialized and created for that. And, I mean, the color's probably been around longer, but, I mean, they used to call it something else. But before it became the modern rendition of Gold Bond, they used to call it that by the paper in the printing industry. And it used to just uh, drive me crazy because I would be like, well, Gold Bond what? That's a color. And they're like, no, it's a paper. <laughs> and it turned out to be both. It was a signature color for that paper so that they could use the matte finish on the, um, the old school printing plates. So, yep. You learn something new every day. I'm just going to kind of drag this up a little bit through this brow. Not too much. I'm going to kind of keep that out there. And I want to put some under this, underneath the edge of this nose. And we're going to go down this way for this shadow here. Kind of pull that through a little bit that way. And then right off this ridge. And then I'll firm that up. Okay. Kind of streaking this through just a little bit. To blend it all together. Not really hard shadowing. But a little bit of a, a pull there. Okay. Like that. Now, that's one thing you can do with the pencils that you can't do with the markers or the paints or, you know, the digital. It makes it pull the color by the stroke of the, the tool when you blend all that together. <clears throat> that's something you can do, which you can't do with just any medium. I love that effect. Pull that down just a little bit. So you guys can see what's going on. Okay, cool. Now that pops him out a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me. Like I said, I was going to do. So I'm going to come back in with that gray there and uh, smoke that out. But pop in just a little bit here in this chest. Like that. Come around that face just a little so it goes through him. Like that right there. And then I want to put a hard edge right here because I want to pull that off just a little bit off that chest and make it just a little bit darker up here where he's leaning over. And then come back down and lean in on this just a little bit too. So it pulls all that together. And then we'll put out that little outline edge kind of thing and leave that highlight. And then down here at the bottom, we'll press that off just a little. leaving just that little ridge for the highlight. A lot of people go right out to that dark edge because of the fact that they'll, you know, block that light and whatnot. But I don't want it to do that because I want it to hold that interior shadow and that edge and then pull it out where that light goes across there. And it goes across on both sides. So you have that uniform center shadow and there we go cool and deal dust off my hand here to make sure 
Everything's cool. And this stuff, um, I'm getting asked about this. Uh, the dust off, I use the, the Falcon dust off brand. I mean, it's just for like electronics. And you can buy a four pack of it at like Office Depot, Sam's, you know, general places like that. So it's like 10 or $12, depending on where you get it. And it'll last forever. As long as you're not like spraying stuff, you know, constantly. Now, whatever you do, don't shoot people with it because it's got a that brand specifically has a, a common practice of uh, spraying you and freezing stuff, and it will give you frostbite if that spray hits your hands. Just letting you know now. Uh, so don't go shooting your cat or your, you know, your spouse or your kid or whatever with it because you will regret it. You'll give them frostbite and then they will hate you forever. Um, I saw a guy playing around with that. At, uh, at Sam's, and I told him, hey, I said, hey, man, that stuff comes out, and uh, being young people, they didn't listen, and uh, they had a good time with it, and ended up, one of the guys losing part of his finger, because they were spraying each other, and he blocked it with his hand, and got some of the spray on it, and it turned his, uh, part of his finger black, and uh, he had lost a frostbite, uh, chemical burn, so... Be very cautious of that stuff. <clears throat> a lot of people won't use them because of that. Um, I use it, but I'm the only one, and I don't let it. I don't let anybody mess with it. You know, of course, I don't want people messing around in my office anyway, um, because then I can't find stuff, <laughs> or they use it up, and then it, you know, then it's empty, and I have to go get more, and that frustrates me. <laughs> so. I like to take my toys and go home at that point because, uh, you know, that's the way it goes, man. When, you know, it's like, well, I need some tape. Well, I do too because you used the last of it. Where'd it go? I need to use your spray can because I've got to get this, you know, blown out because of my keyboard being dusty or dirty or whatever. And it's, you know, uh, okay, just be sure you bring it back and or replace it if you use it all up cracks me up but my brother my younger brother is uh, the world's worst about that I, I always say the uh, my younger brother but the thing is I'm the oldest so it's redundant but whatever <laughs> but uh, he's the world's worst about that he takes stuff and uses it and you know he'll leave it like an empty can sitting there and he's like oh sorry man dude yeah, he's notorious for that. I mean, he'll go get it if you address it, but if if you leave it alone, he's he's just like that. He'll get sidetracked with something else, and you'll be like, man. But so yeah, just word to the wise there. If you use that spray stuff, be careful. Because, you know, you lose a finger. So, I'm going to get this going, and then I'm going to do the red belt buckle. And, I say the red belt buckle, but the red and yellow belt buckle. And then the, um... <clears throat> The belt, I suppose, I'm going to make blue. I don't normally do that. Uh, I normally like to make that belt red, kind of an old school thing, and make it uh, stand out with that big red belt, leather belt that he wears. So I might do that red too. I don't know. It's a matter of opinion. Personal taste and interest. So, move that down just a little. <clears throat> I'm going to go in here and get the side of this nose with that seam. There we go. Cool deal. Now, I'm going to pull out this red. And a lot of people like to make this buckle red or yellow. Um, 
with uh, red inserts, and that's fine too. See, I just snapped that, and I barely pushed. <laughs> I just snap it off, snap. Done deal, snap. So, anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and do this belt red since I've got it here. Go ahead and knock that out. And then go back because this is the shaded part where he's leaning down. I'm going to go ahead and grind in a little bit of this gold bond here and make that pop out a little bit. Cool deal. Now I'm going to go back and take this <clears throat> super light gray here and add in just a little bit of this under underline like that and go right along that edge there too for the shadow of the mouth kind of shade that up and right here in the eyes I'm going to put a little shadow like that for that okay cool and deal now I'm going to leave the skin the same way. I didn't draw in the hair where we normally have hair on Wolverine, uh, hairy arms and stubble. I didn't want to do that. I did a classic clean shaven Wolverine because of the fact that I just didn't want to risk muddying that up because I was going to do pencils. So there we go. Um, I'll raise that up just a little bit where you guys can check it out. <clears throat> hey, Jackie. Thanks for coming by. I appreciate it. Thanks for popping on. Now, because we've got Wolverine here with this one, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to take a Sharpie. I know this is penciled, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a Sharpie and I'm going to go around the outline of him and I'll pop it off just a little bit. So you guys will get to see that. Hopefully I won't screw it up. We're going to make him pop. A little bit of old school look. Outline him for color a little bit. Give him that 1990s sticker style. Okay. Checking to make sure I'm still on, on camera here. But yeah, like I said, this will be available for free download later today. You won't have to put in your email or opt-in or anything like that. You can just go on the site and download it. So, <clears throat> I think that's a cool approach. <coughs> wow. Excuse my coughing there. Okay. And I dropped my pen. <clears throat> Knocked the cap off. I'm going to Go around this thigh before I go back up and go around the blades there. I'm a little touchy with that. A little smoother groove going. There we go. Cool. All right. Now, I'm going to go in with this wonderful red right around this, right around these blades here. So, and there we go, cool down. Now I'm going to take a deep breath here just so I don't screw this up. Hopefully I won't. Cool. All righty. Do a little Todd Knox style with this uh, <clears throat> very cool painted outline. Love that. Todd's one of my idols. As far as comic art goes, that dude, he's been in the industry for a while. And uh, he's still one of my favorites.
does beautiful line work. And sadly, he sold his soul to the devil, so he's way better with the Copics and the pencils than I am as far as the hand coloring. <clears throat> Let's see. Excuse my coughing fit today. It's horrible. Allergies. It's been such a rainy patch of weather here lately that uh, all the pollen is like supercharged. And it's just crazy. It is insane. So. And now we have that really cool outline. Boy, that's popping up. Nice. Cool deal. And we'll see about that. Now, like I said, you guys, if you're digging this, <clears throat> you'll be able to download it. And another thing is that uh, I will be continuing to do the 50 for 50. If you guys haven't heard of that, uh, bear with me just a second. <clears throat> dry mouth talking too much talking too much you guys are killing me no I'm kidding love hanging out with you guys um, you know, everybody says that but uh, the funny thing is, is that when you drink something when you're choked up like that all it does is wet your palate it doesn't have anything to do with the vocal cords because well, liquid doesn't go down that path in your throat so it doesn't go down that side but anyway as I was saying uh, I am doing the 50 for 50. I still have uh, some slots open for that in my schedule. And uh, if you're interested, that is a $50 11 by 17 black and white. And 75 for color. Plus shipping to get it there to you safely. But, uh, yeah. I don't normally do commissions. <clears throat> because I like to focus on the page. So, <clears throat> wow. I hope I'm not getting laryngitis because I have to record this afternoon. That would be a bummer. Why didn't you release it today? Because I can't breathe. Okay. So, the drawing looked great, but you sounded horrible. <laughs> Sound like Patrick. <clears throat> Patrick and SpongeBob, when they went into uh, Sandy's dome for the first time and it was all air. I can't breathe. That's pretty much what I'm going through. But, uh. We'll get there. We're almost done. But I don't want to go radio silent, though, because that would be even worse. Okay. <clears throat> Besides this, uh, there we go. This is at the home stretch here. So I don't want to uh, go silent right now. There we are. And I do have new episodes of the podcast coming up, by the way. Um, kind of Kickstarter, uh, as well as uh, Interfusion Marketing on the radio. So you guys will have all that. And uh, going to be talking through some quick stuff, man. Lots of industry cool stuff. Um just hanging out, doing the marketing thing, doing the comic book thing. 
I got told again uh, day before yesterday. It's like, well, you know, you can't do all of it. Well, bet me. I beg to differ. But anyway, here we are. Maybe I should go across his chest and just outline this hand too. That would be weird. But uh, just to separate it. <laughs> but anyway, this is what we have right now. We have Wolverine here. Hope you guys dig this thing. And uh, do a full pan here. This is going to be awesome. Like I said, I'll make this into a meme. And uh, you can download it as a background. Uh, put it on your desktop, whatever you want to do. Put it on your cell phone as a background. That would be awesome. I will have versions of the, just the picture itself uh, as well. And I thought that'd be cool. So with that said, we've been on here for a while now. Um, an, an hour and 11 minutes. So thank you very much for hanging out with me and enjoying this, I hope. So I will catch you guys on the next one. As always, I leave you with this roller coaster we call life. And you guys know what to do. Make it better for the next generation. Let's get it done, man. Talk to you soon. Take care.